Hi, my name is Kimberly Malloy. I am an RN tra transplant coordinator, and I have been with Mayo Clinic for 20 years, and we are presenting a presentation on kidney organ options along with Tita. Hi, everybody. My name is Tita Bordinger Heron. I am a pre kidney transplant. Um, and pancreas transplant coordinator at Mayo Clinic. I have been here as a nurse for 18 years, and prior to that worked in um, a secretarial position for about um, five years. So total almost 25 years of service here at Mayo. All right, Kim, you wanna go ahead? So different, um, this is a graph showing uh, the patient survival regarding dialysis or transplant. And as you can see with dialysis, the five-year patient survival is 42.6%. And deceased donor transplant, um, the donor, deceased donor transplant, the survival rate is 75.6. And living donor uh, increases 8 to 87.6 for a five-year patient survival. As for the 10-year, you'll see that dialysis is 20.3%, deceased donor transplant is 46.2, and living donor transplant is 55.9. So this slide just indicates that with transplant, your patient survival is longer, and is especially longer with a living donor transplant. The different types of organ transplants that we do are, there's two types, living donor kidney transplant as well as deceased donor kidney transplant. Living donor obviously would be the best choice um, for um, a recipient because they, organs do have a longer um, survival rate after transplant. Um, it also it, it enables a patient to be transplanted much quicker. And, excuse me, and then of course we do have just, <clears throat> excuse me, deceased donor kidney transplant, where the donor organs come from patients um, who have passed away and their family and or loved ones have made the decision to donate their organs. So how long does it take to get a transplant? For a living donor, um, if you have a donor that does match you, usually we can do that um, in within three months. Um, if you have somebody willing to be a living donor and they do not match you, we do the pair kidney donor exchange. And sometimes you can get, uh, you can get transplanted uh, usually within six to 12 months. If you are waiting for a deceased donor transplant, you join the national waiting list. And on average, it, the wait time is three to five years. Sometimes it can extend depending on your blood type to five or six years. Or if you have antibodies, it could be longer. The list of patients on the waiting list continues to grow every day. As of current, most recent data, there are currently about 115,000 patients waiting on the wait list for kidney and or liver transplant. There are about 650,000 people looking at end-stage renal disease, and there are over 468,000 who are currently on dialysis. This obviously goes to show you that the amount of donor organs far outweighs, um, or the need for donor organs far outweighs um, the availability of those organs. So we all want, like, expect the best um, is what drives our decision-making process. And so we have to decide if we um, are willing to take what's called a PHS increased risk or a high KDPI or a hep C donor. Just to reiterate, Kim, you're good? Yep. Okay. All right, and just to reiterate, these are the three different types of deceased donor organs that we're going to consider for kidney transplant. The, you'll hear us refer to it as PHS, or Public Health Service Increased Risk. Also the High Kidney Donor Profile Index, we'll call that the KDPI, and then the Hepatitis C Positive Donor Organs. 
So the increased increasing frequency of PHS donors, which are the high risk donors, you can see from 2005 to 2014 that there was a significant increase um, on those donors. And we'll talk a little bit more about those donors and what causes them to be high risk. Our, excuse me, the PHS high risk kidney, or again, the public health service high risk kidneys are organs that come from donors who may have done certain things during their life that put them at a higher risk for possibly having and or transmitting um, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, or HIV. Those behaviors or things that they've done could include drug use or having gone to prison, having been um, homeless uh, for extended periods of times. There are also certain medical factors such as receiving multiple blood transfusions after a motor vehicle accident or after a surgery. And those uh, circumstances also put those individuals at higher risk for transmission of one of these um, viral infections. Our doctors do thoroughly screen all um, kidney donors to check for any infection before transplant. So the risk of getting an infection from a donor organ is very low. However, um, not non-existent, but it is a very low risk. So what caused these increased risk donors? Um, the U.S. opioid epidemic, almost 30% almost of donors are IRD. Um, discard rates are two times higher in the uh, high-risk donors than non-high-risk donors. And it just seems wasteful to discard these. There should be someone on the list who would benefit. And these donors typically tend to be uh, young people. Um, and this just shows us the um, deceased donors. There was 10,721 deceased donors and 2,900 of them were identified as increased risk donors. And this comes from 2018. Um, compared to the non-increased risk donors, the increased risk donors were younger. Obviously a younger donor organ could have the potential to have a longer survival outcome after transplant. So, um, we are encouraging people to consider these higher risk organs uh, because they tend to come from younger donors. They may have a better long-term outcome. So what is a high KDPI kidney? So a deceased donor kidneys differ based on their kidney donor profile index. And that scale is zero to 100. And that rates how long the deceased donor kidneys are expected to last after transplant. A lower KDPI score usually means that the kidney will last longer. Um, so the different types, there's three different categories. The low KDPI kidneys between zero to 20 um, indicate that the donors were younger and healthier when they died. And these kidneys last the longest. Um, for standard criteria, KDPI score between 20 to 85. They usually last 10 to 15 years on average. And then the high KDPI kidney score greater than 85, those kidneys on average last seven to 10 years. And the high KDPI kidneys you have to sign a consent for. Everybody is listed for KDPI score zero to 85. These are the different factors that go into um, a KDPI score for a donor organ. Um, these factors include the age, height, weight, ethnicity, um, the cause of death, whether it was a loss of heart function or loss of brain function for the um, donor, if stroke was a cause of death, if the donor has a history of high blood pressure, a history of diabetes, if they had been exposed to hepatitis C, and what their current serum creatinine is during their hospitalization prior to being considered for donation. <clears throat> <clears throat> so higher KDPI scores come from deceased donors who are older or has certain health problems when they died. While those kidneys may not last as long, you could get a transplant sooner by accepting one and increase your chances. This is a great option for certain patients, especially older patients who are expected to have longer wait times. <clears throat> so these graphs are a little, a little bit busy in my brain, but um, this is looking at the survival benefit for um, patients on the waiting list. And if you look in the top row, the remains on the wait list, um, 
this is a, a five year survival, I'm sorry. Um, if somebody who remains on the waiting list is only at 60 or is at 61.8%. If a person gets the kidney transplant, their survival benefit at five years is at 84%. So you can see that's a, a, almost a, or over 20% increase um, of the survival benefit from the kidney transplant. And that's with a high KDPI score. Oh, my apology. And so um, with the hep C donors, hep C donors, um, you also have to sign a consent for just like the high KDPI. So every year in the US, approximately 500 kidneys are considered ineligible for donation and are discarded because they came from deceased donors who are hep C positive. Hepatitis C is a liver infection caused by the hepatitis C virus. Um, hepatitis C originally was known as non-A, non-B hepatitis and was not actually named hepatitis C until the early 1990s. The um, virus is spread through bloodborne um, pathogen, or it is a bloodborne pathogen and can be spread through sharing needles, giving birth, healthcare exposures, um, sexual intercourse with an infected person, unregulated tattoos and body piercings, um, sharing personal care items such as razors or toothbrushes, types of things that could come in contact with someone's blood. So getting a kidney transplant from a hepatitis C donor when you don't have hepatitis C, um, it is most likely that you will get hepatitis C, but there are medications now available that we can treat the hepatitis C. It is medication you take once a day for three months, and then it is cured. Um, but there always is a very, very small chance that you could not cure the hep C, but it's unlikely. Um, the drugs are very effective, and um, it's been found that the health of the people who receive a kidney transplant is better than the health of people on long-term dialysis. So here are some questions that we have provided um, in previous discussions. And what is an example of a high risk donor? A donor that has a history of cancer, a donor that has served five years in jail, or a donor who is physically disabled? Tita, you wanna share the answer? Certainly, and we know that the um, it's the donor who served the five years in jail. Right. So. Um, because of his high risk behavior, he is considered a high risk donor, um, but that could be a young person and that kidney could last for several years. Um, which individual is predicted to have a higher survival rate in five years? A candidate who remains on the wait list or be a candidate that gets transplanted with a high KDPI score donor? Again, that would be B, the candidate that gets transplanted with a high KDPI donor. Because right. we know transplant offers the better outcome for long-term survival, whereas if a patient remains on dialysis, they can um, are at increased risk for developing other health uh, complications. That's right. And, and three, hepatitis C is treatable. A, true or B, false? Absolutely true. That's right. And that's why we offer those organs to patients. We now have medication to treat that, and it's very effective. And that is the end of our presentation. Um, thank you very much for listening. Thanks for taking your time out. <laughs>